I'm Jim Kovaleski. Uh, I'm an urban farmer in downtown Newport Ritchie. I'm farming on two regular size city lots. Well, I guess one's a little bigger. There's about a half acre of land in production. I've been doing it here for part of the land for eight years and part for 12. Ooh, that sounds good. I'm feeding about 75 to 80 families their winter vegetables all season long. Well, thanks for coming out. I was up at 4.30 with a headlight. It's a good life. It is a good life, I have to agree. Yeah, I've been growing things my whole life. I was in lawn care, but um, you know, I took a permaculture design course in 2007, and that really changed how I felt about the land around human structures. Suddenly became a place of abundance instead of just eye candy when you're doing landscaping. Growing food really touched my soul. That's what led me into this whole urban farming thing. You know, my mom died um, in September. Um, kind of really changed how this farm can operate because I've been using her land. It's actually my brother's land. He's been letting me use it for free while my mom stayed there for the last 12 years. So that's really changed the dynamic because he needs to sell out. Um, he wants to you know, get his money out of it, which I don't blame him. Um, and the current real estate value really wouldn't allow me to purchase it and sell it to Tanner for, um, you know, the going real estate value. So my idea is to get you all to support me buying it uh, and then me dropping the price so that Tanner could afford it. Um, kind of take the reality of the real estate value away and put it in real terms of farm value. I'd like to make it so that this farm could continue to um, inspire young farmers and old farmers and feed this community for another generation. So I've got a younger man in his family that will take it over and I wanna pass it on so that more and more people can be inspired by what's happened here. It's been amazing the outpouring of people coming by here day after day after day saying that, oh, I saw the video, now I'm doing market. I saw the video, now I'm growing food for my grandma. You know, that kind of stuff is um, really wonderful. It feels good. And it's time for me to bow out. You know, farmers age out. Got a four-year-old daughter in Maine and a home set up there waiting for me to be more full-time there. So the idea will be for me to slowly turn this over to Tanner and his family. With you all's help, we can make it affordable for everybody. Because the bad thing would be if we couldn't do it. Because I know I could cash in on this one at the current real estate value, and my brother could too, and, but the farm would discontinue. I mean, I know nobody's gonna jump in here and do it. It'd end up being St. Augustine grass, which would be so sad. Um, and this would allow this to go on for another 10, 15 years anyway. I think it's a really important thing for people to taste quality food out of a really good soils. And to be able to pass that along, it's a unique opportunity here because we've got a window of probably a couple years where I can transfer my knowledge to you and still um, kind of move on to Maine where I can you know, spend a little more time. And the crowdfunding, purchasing that house next door and the land that goes with it will um, allow us a, a time frame to do that. You know, if I, I mean, the, the best profit I could get was passing on to you. <laughs> I knew I'd cry. Oh, well. Well, synchronicity is wild. I mean, I really wasn't looking for anybody, but when Tanner showed up, it was like, yeah, this is it. I mean, it just was one of those things. And when you got those feelings, you really got to jump on, not just pause. And that's why I'm, you know, I'm not one to ask for anything usually, but um, I don't feel like I'm asking it so much for me as for the community and the continuity of this land. <laughs>